feel like sometimes life is really mental. Dude, that's actually a really good name for a podcast. <laughs> Sometimes I have these weeks where I get really depressed and that I don't mean to not be answering my texts and I don't mean to be flopping on plans, I'm just having a hard time. So it's just the validation of my feelings is a really good feeling. Hey everyone, welcome to Really Mental where we want you to know no matter who you are, you're not alone. Today we're welcoming Ava Rose Bruni to the show. She is an awesome influencer and creator on social media and we're really excited to have her back for season two. If you are new here, then make sure you follow, like, and subscribe at Really Mental Podcast. And if you find something useful in this, make sure you share it with a friend that it could help because it helps us grow and continue to expand the movement. Really excited to talk to Ava. He's going to kick things off with us and let's welcome her to the show. So Ava, how have you been? How is your mental health? Honestly, Recently, it's been a little difficult, but like I've had so much more support than I used to have, which has made it a lot easier. And I definitely like have a better way of managing it now. And I have things that I'm doing and it's definitely a lot less rocky than how it was before. Yeah. And what do you kind of like look for when it's like the people around you? Like in what ways are they kind of supporting you? I think reassurance is my biggest thing because a part of like my anxiety is always what ifs that will drive me into these like spirals and my friends are always like well if you're worrying about the what ifs like you know it's just gonna plague your mind and I'm like that's the issue <laughs> like it already is and sometimes like I have these weeks where I get really depressed and it's just them knowing that I'm like that right now and that I don't mean to not be answering my texts and I don't mean to be flopping on plans I'm just having a hard time so it's just like the validation of my feelings is a really good feeling. Yeah, totally. I think reassurance, especially in the world we're in now, and I think we have just what it's like to grow up at the moment, that's so important. And I really resonate with the what ifs because sometimes I'll find myself going into holes of like what if scenarios. And it's like exhausting because there's always something to worry about. And the good thing is I can't focus on too many things at once. So it'll be like one thing and it'll move to the next, but it still doesn't make it too much easier because it's like exhausting to just constantly think about, you know, oh, what could go wrong? Do you experience that as well? Or is it a different type of anxiety? Oh no, that's so, so relatable. <laughs> like it is just a spiral. And once I'm reassured about one thing, it's like the next thing. And I feel like I don't get a break. And I think those one week depressions are just, the exhaustion of constantly worrying about these things. I think I just tire myself out. And, and like you said, like, even when things are going good, I feel like it's more comforting to be constantly anxious about things because at least I'm prepared, right? Like when you're having a good week and something happens, you're like, I could have been thinking about this. I could have been prepared for this. So it's just, it's like a cycle that's never ending. How do you like, self-reassure yourself instead of getting like external reassurance honestly i don't really self-reassure and i don't really know how to do that just yet i find it a lot easier from friends but it's definitely something that i'm trying to work on like if i'm thinking about these things i'll try and talk myself down but i feel like because i'm the one that's making these things in my head it's so hard to tell myself otherwise yeah i think that um when it comes to like being a friend to ourselves like it's always been a concept that I've been I've been thinking about that recently and when I was in therapy last week like my therapist was saying you can ask yourself for advice so you can be like you know for me will you know what do you think of this and it sort of creates this like I guess gap between you and the situation and it, that helps me be able to like I guess like soothe myself in those times. And it's interesting because you can sort of develop more of a relationship with yourself through it. Not that that will work for everyone, but it actually has been helpful for me. I'm excited for today's chat, you know, around creating positive habits. I wanted to ask you, like when it comes to creating, I guess, better habits around the anxiety that you're feeling, how do you go about that? I think the first thing I always go to is my, my physical health. Because when I'm drinking a lot of coffee, 
I'm instantly anxious and co coffee is like a stimulant like that. So I've had to like try and get off coffee because I find when I have anxiety, it's 10 times worse and it's not really healthy. And the other thing that I know is a big issue right now with teens is vaping. And I found that when I was addicted to vaping, my anxiety and my body health was so bad. I was barely eating. My brain was so cloudy and I was just anxious all the time. And once you stop, you can like feel your body like go back to normal. And I feel like physical health that ties in with your mental health is so important. And I don't feel like it's talked about a lot. Like I think like therapy and like, you know, like the mindfulness stuff is talked about a lot, but not like the physical health of it. Another thing I find is cleaning my room regularly. When I get in these ruts, sometimes I can stop cleaning my room, stop showering and brushing my teeth. I know that's a big thing with a lot of people when they become depressed. It's, it's hard to take care of yourself physically. And so having some kind of motivation or friends to help you to like get you up out of bed and get you to do these things is so helpful because sometimes we just can't do that for ourselves. And eating habits as well, that's one of the other things when I start feeling down is I stop eating enough and that really takes a toll on you and your body. So I think those are like the biggest things for me. When it comes to like just that habit of vaping is really relatable for a lot of people. I feel like when it comes to any habit, which is like hard to shake, I think that that's sort of the journey that it takes. And sometimes it is tough to like form that better habit or better, more healthy addiction to something, which I guess is better for our bodies. But what would you say is like the best way for you at least to create a, a different habit, which is actually good for you? One thing I did was because I, I bite my nails a lot, or at least I haven't in a while, like they're super long right now because I got into like doing my own nails, like acrylics and stuff, and I made it a fun thing for me. So when I have my acrylics on and I'm doing it, I can't bite my nails. And instead I'd, I'd wanna keep them because I did them and I think they're so pretty. And I think it's just like finding something instead that you can do that like makes you happy so you don't wanna do it. And like for the hand motions and stuff and having to use my hands, I'll get those things on Amazon that you can pop or like something to keep my hand busy. So I'm not thinking about like, if I had this right now, like I could be doing this kind of thing. So I think it was just substituting with something else that isn't harmful to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. And when it comes to your like mental health, what are some of the things you're doing to kind of help that and help you kind of deal with your anxiety and stuff? So one of the things that I've made sure of is like building my own independence because I find when I'm really anxious, I depend on other people a lot. So... I'll fill my schedule until I'm completely exhausted just to keep my brain busy. And so I think one of the things I've been trying to do is have independence and make time for myself where I'm doing things I like, whether that's going outside and like learning a new language for fun. That's one thing I picked up or journaling, finding a video game that I like. Like that's another one. Just making time for myself and making sure that I'm not necessarily sitting with my thoughts, but I'm not hiding from them like I'm not distracting myself from my thoughts so how I guess how did you even realize that that should be a habit that like you should pick up and and like take on I think it was a year and a bit ago maybe almost two years ago I wasn't in school or anything and I didn't have my part-time and I was filling my schedule up until I was just just completely exhausted and one of my best friends Emma she is like so independent. Like it's just like mind boggling how independent she is. And she was like, Ava, you need to have time for yourself, like do things that you like to do. And she helped me kind of come up with ways that I can like be on my own and not have to make these plans all the time. Because I'm just, a, I'm a very codependent person. I'm like that with my friends and my boyfriend and everyone. I just, I don't have that independence. When it comes to like codependency and those types of things, how do you maintain relationships with people who maybe are a bit more, don't need it, like they don't need, they're very good at being alone and stuff like that? My boyfriend is actually like that. So he is hyper independent in a lot of ways and likes his alone time. And I am 
the codependent one. And I find that being with someone like that has helped so much because they create boundaries and you have to, like, big thing is I respect boundaries because I have my own boundaries too. So when he puts up those boundaries, it forces me to, like, be independent and let him have his time. And I think, like, I've taken a lot of things from him as well that, like, I can use in my life. And it's because if I had the choice, I'd hang out with him every single day, which isn't healthy. And I know that, but it's good that he has those boundaries so I can't get to that point. And it's definitely taught me more independence in relationships. Ava, if you're willing to go into it, how do you feel, like, valued in a relationship when you, like, are wanting a lot of time with your partner, but your partner is also independent and needs time to recharge? That's a that's a great question because sometimes I do take offense, which is not their fault at all. It's just that I don't understand the whole like independence thing to the fullest because I've always been more centered around other people. But I think being self-aware and knowing like, I am my own person, they're their own person. If they want time and that's not with me, it's not an insult. They still love me. Like, I don't have to be like, oh my God, like they don't want to hang out with me. They don't love me. Like, yes, maybe that goes through my mind because I'm an anxious person. But I think reminding myself that like, that just means they want some time to do whatever they want. And like, that's not a bad thing. And I'll see them tomorrow or the next day. And I think self-assurance is like, as you were saying, is so important to learn, especially in these situations where I'm not bothering them when they want their alone time, right? I, I wanted to ask, because lately, one thing I've been thinking about a lot and trying to figure out is like, around taking care of my like physical body. We talk a lot about mental health and we've already mentioned here with you, Ava, you know, the importance of like sleep and getting like, and taking care of your brain what what like when i say like brain health like what comes to mind for you i'm interested like because i have been learning so much more about it recently like okay now that you mention it again because at first i just thought of like caffeine and like stimulants right like yeah, that's yeah. in my head but now that you say it again i feel like i like to do like these games on my phone i feel like a grandma but like sudoku or like again like i said learning a new language like stimulating yeah. my brain in a good way and yeah. like that's such a good way to keep yourself busy and keep those thoughts out, but in like a healthy way. And it's yeah. good for your brain too, right? Like it's, it's good for you. So. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I think that even like with sleep and stuff, like sleep's so important too. I think like for me, when I get anxious and then I'll have like a nap or like I sleep on it, I feel so much better the next day when I've just like had like, you know, a good amount of sleep. And it's just like, I just wish some of these things were like, I guess, spoken about a little bit more when I was growing up and like trying to learn about, you know, how to take care of my mental health. Because as we were saying earlier, it's a lot about like therapy and all these things, but there's so much more to it than I feel like is spoken about. Harrison, what do you think? Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's, there's all these different elements that have their own like responsibilities when it comes to our mental health. So is, are you exercising? Are you sleeping? Are you eating? And that's all the physical side. Are you educating your brain? That's the physical side. Then we have the mental health side, which is kind of like, are we dealing with our brain? Are, are we learning coping mechanisms to kind of deal with the things that we're going through? And it's really hard to do the mental health side when you can't, haven't done the brain health side. So it's like the physical and then the mental. And I think the physical is really hard to do actually. It's like, it's hard to get up and exercise regularly. It's hard to eat really well, especially when you're not already mentally doing well. So it's this kind of like 360 scope of like, if you're really mentally struggling and you can barely look after yourself, how are you meant to get up, exercise and do those things to try and then make your mental health better? So like that's kind of the, the thing that's interesting. How are you meant to do those things when you're already struggling? If you're already doing that, how are you meant to take yourself back, get out of that and then kind of deal with what you need to deal with again. I don't know. I'm asking you guys if you guys have any thoughts regarding that cycle. Honestly, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think the hardest thing to do is like, I feel like sometimes it's overwhelming because it's like, where do I start? And like, how can this end? Because I feel like that can become such a vigorous cycle where it's like, you stop working out slowly, you stop eating, you stop sleeping well, and that affects your mental. 
and then you really can't do those things and you have to pull yourself out somehow and then maybe that cycle repeats. And I think that's the hardest part is finding that balance between all of them where you can slowly stop that cycle. I don't know. That's kind of like my stance. On yeah, <laughs> I think that's right. I think it's like it's tough sometimes to find the way through these things where we're in a dark place or don't have as much energy. And I think starting off one step at a time, one, you know, putting one brick on top of the other at a time, which could just be exercising to start with, we've sort of spoken about. And there's always been this sort of self-awareness that I feel like fortunately the three of us have. When it comes to the person listening that may not have any idea of how they even feel, where would you start? I feel like what I did first was kind of self-reflection. Like I would kind of like, and this is my thing, I think it comes from anxiety is looking back on scenarios or fights you've had with people or issues you've had with people. And I would kind of like self-reflect and like read it back to me. Maybe in some of them I'd be like, hmm, I did this. I don't really know. Like, And that's kind of how you start figuring yourself out. And I think another good thing is having friends that will hold you accountable or having friends that will tell you how it is. Because I know I'm the same with my friends. If, if they do something or I'm noticing something, I'll tell them right away. And I feel like that helps you build that like knowledge about yourself. And even a therapist can do that. I know therapy doesn't work for some people, but telling a professional about what you're dealing with, they can write it out for you and give it to you how it is. And I feel like it's this gradual like learning of yourself and your thought processes and kind of reflection that brings you to self-awareness right i was gonna say was just sit and let your thoughts run wild like don't like yeah. limit them literally just like you just need to sit you need to do nothing and you just need to let your thoughts run wild and allow them to and then you're gonna go into some places that you feel uncomfortable you're gonna go into some places that you don't really maybe like but if you let them run wild then that could be a really nice way of like starting to get them at the forefront of your brain and really just allow them to flow and figure things out. Yeah, I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is just journaling. And I think that's a mix of what, you know, both of you were saying, because I think when you sit down and let your thoughts run wild, I think for me, at least I find it helpful to have like some form of like, you know, taking notes and sort of piecing things out. So I think finding something which doesn't feel like you're, having to do so much at the start and, and just feels like a slightly, you know, a comfortable step into the unknown to try and grow is like a healthy place to start because, you know, we're not going to solve any of this overnight. I was super excited to watch you continue to grow and I feel like I enjoy these check-ins because I feel like that we get to be a part of your journey with your mental health and yeah. it's cool to watch you just continue to grow as we all are. Yeah. Like, I feel like the things we spoke about today is like a nice progression from our last chat. Oh, well, thank you. It's always nice to, to catch up and nostalgia. It's great. So, Will, yeah, I really loved that episode with Ava. I think it's really important for us to recognize the importance of things external to the way that we're feeling and how they impact us. So for example, our eating, our sleeping, our exercise, all those different types of things that really influence the health of our brain and then have a knock-on effect to our emotions. So if you love this episode, please rate it five stars, follow us at Really Mental Podcast, and be sure to support Ava on their socials as well. We'll see you next week. We've got an amazing episode. And yeah, thanks for sticking around.